Mahajanuddin. So you were the much more radical Muslim. I was very much so. And you were a Shiite? Yes. And because of that, you did not like Christianity? Not just because of that. Because Allah doesn't have no love, no No, 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 you're jumping ahead. Okay. When you were a Mujahideen, put your Mujahideen on, tap on. Yes. As a Mujahideen, okay. you did not like Christianity, right? No, I didn't. You did not like our oh, God. Oh, no, I didn't. I hate Christian faith. You hated Jesus. Well, not Jesus. You hated Jesus, but you loved Isa. Yes. You hated the, uh, Yahweh, but you loved Allah. Yes. You hated the Bible, but you loved the Quran. Yes. You, so you were a born, you were a bona fide Muslim. Yes. And you believed that Islam should come to the whole world. Definitely. Okay, and you were a Shiite Muslim, right? Yes. Okay, living in Iran, that's where you've grown up. That's where you were. Yeah. But some, you used to come to Speaker's Corner, didn't you? Yes, I did. And you used to listen to all the speakers. Yes, I did. And what was your impression 40 years ago when you came to Speaker's Corner? Uh, about Islam or about... About what you saw here. Okay. I saw it's great. It's good that people oh, can talk. And I was very happy that Muslim, they've got the platform to, to speak. Because in the Islamic country, they have no platform. But here, they've got freedom and they can talk. This is the only place on earth where we can be critical yes. of any religion, of any people, of any faith, yeah. and also of any ism. Yeah. <laughs> and so that's why we come here, because it is the bastion of freedom of speech, isn't it? That's right. And because of that, you came here to listen to that. Listen and speak. But you liked Islam. Yes. And you were glad yes. that it was being used. And I was wearing hijab. Oh, so you had a hijab as well. Yeah, I have a picture to show. So something happened, however, when you were here at Speaker's Corner. Yeah. Tell I us what happened. Well, the first time I came, I couldn't speak English at all. And it was a Persian lady came and said to me, Thanks, thanks for doing that. Thank you for doing that. that. It means Jesus Christ loves you. And I said, bad language, stuff your Jesus. I don't want to be at all part of your religion because your religion is for the West. I am a Middle East. I don't want to become Christian. That was the start. So that was the beginning. Are you listening? So you hated what you were hearing. You didn't like the gospel of Jesus. No. You didn't care for the Jesus we were talking about. No. You didn't care for the Bible or anything Christian. You were said, stuff it. And, and I, you use bad language. Yes. Okay, as a Muslim, you're allowed to use bad language? Well, you, the, Islam, the Muslims say you are not allowed, but Islams does. And that's why we grown up to insult the non-believer. Okay. Now, something then happened that was even better. What happened next? After I heard the gospel, I ignored, but that woman truly, truly loved grace and showed the kindness and came and helped me. So there was a woman here who talked to you is what you're saying about Jesus about Jesus yeah and you liked her mannerism absolutely she didn't use foul language oh no she was talking about Jesus yes but I was rude to her you were rude to her yes but she was not rude back not at all I can't even mention her name because she doesn't mind and my my life been filmed so it is in the YouTube her name was Jale 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 was the lady Yes. who you were so impressed with. Yes. And what was she doing? She was being Christ-like, was she not? She was kind. She was absolutely polite. And with the very loving, she was talking to me. And why do you think she was doing that? Uh, I don't know. I thought maybe uh, she's trying to get some money from me. Okay, so you thought she was trying to trick you. Yes. Because they don't do that in Islam, do they? Oh, no, they don't. They don't do not that. Not at all. They never allowed. May I say, I was just talking to the guy called Mansoor. He was so rude to me. And he even called me a clown. You know why? Because I'm a woman. And in Islam, woman has got no place. That's why Mansoor was rude to me. Okay, so Mansoor, we've known him for many years. And he is notorious for doing that. But this woman was totally different. Yes. This woman changed your mind. 
Yes. But then you also had another problem with Islam, and that had to do with your country. Oh, yes. What was wrong with your country, Iran? Well, the country of Iran, we had a revolution, and I was part of the revolution. I wanted Islam to come to my country and kick the Shah, kick the kingdom. But exactly a few months after the revolution, Islam was a dictatorship and did not let us to do anything. It was no freedom for women. We were not free at all. So the very Islam you wanted to come to your country yes. became what exactly you did not want for your country. Exactly. Okay, exactly. so it was one dictatorship for another dictatorship. That's right. And That's this right. new dictatorship was very oppressive to women. Absolutely. All the women, they had to wear scarves, and if a little hair was out, they have, they would be arrested, and then they would be imprisonment. And even now, after 44 years, it still is the same. They're having riots, they're having people incarcerated because of the hijab, even today in yes. 2023 and 24. Absolutely, yes. So that continues even today. Yes, definitely. I want to say, I came to this country 1986. From 1986, I haven't seen my country. I'm exiled from my country. But your family was also have problems, did they not? You have some brothers yes. that had a problem. Tell us about your brothers. I grown up with seven children. I'm number six. Five brothers, two sisters. Two of my brothers, they were politically active in Shah's time and in the regime, uh, Republic, Islamic Republic. So these are your brothers here? There are my brother. This one was a scientist. This one was a lecture university. So these were very academic men. These were highly prized men. These were men with skill. Yes. And yes. you're crying now because of them. Yes. Islamic Islamic Republic has put him to prison, tortured him, and executed him. And they didn't give the body to my Baba, to my father. My father cried out. They didn't give even the body. So they, they completely destroyed him and then got rid of the evidence as well. Yes. And then my second brother, the scientist, he's been arrested and he's gone to prison, political prisoner. He's gone to prison, tortured, and then he's been executed. But because of, we work hard, United Nations, Amnesty International, the British Parliament, I went in and I spoke. And after three days, when the representative of the United Nations came back here, Dr. Maurice Capison called me and said, he is alive, he is okay. Three days later, three days later, they have executed Nasser and killed my second brother. What was their crime? Their crime was a stand for human rights. They were activists and they wanted a democracy for my country, that's all. So they were against the Islamic regime? Yes. They were activists for human rights? Yes. They wanted humans to be treated equally? Yes. And they were killed because of that activity? Only because of that. Just because of that? Yes. One is a scientist and the other lecture university a lecturer in university. Tehran. And I haven't finished. And I was part of the Mujahideen with my youngest brother, two of us. While I was in the capital, as I am from the north of England, they have arrested my north of Iran, sorry. I come from north of Iran. So you're talking about Iran, not England? No. You were north of Iran, you were up in Iran, yes. and your youngest brother? My youngest brother, the same group as I, Mujahideen, which is socialist, Muslim, but we were Muslim, very much so. So what happened then, they arrested my said brother, 
15 years, Mehran, 15 years he was in prison. They tortured him so badly, he's disabled. Now he had three times heart attack, and now he's not allowed to come out of Iran. So you still have a young brother still there? Yes. So this is very close to your heart? Very close, because I love him so much. And over that, as they say, the cherry on the cake, my father cried a lot, cried a lot, and heartbroken. And my father also had a heart attack, age of 72, and passed away. You see what Islam has done to my family. Yes. So you have all kinds of reason to have hatred. But you don't hate them, do you now? Oh, no. I love Muslim. And I brought 30 Muslim, 30 Muslim to Christ, and I baptized them. So you love Jesus, who has given you new life. You don't hate them because Jesus is the one that has changed your life. Yes. And you know that with Jesus, you cannot, you can not only have freedom, but you can also have love. Definitely. I was myself. I was very much a dictator. I was. I had rage. I had anger. And without Jesus, I will be a suicide bomber. Without Jesus, <laughs> I mean it. In the university, I spoke, and I said, "Without Jesus, I will be suicide bomber." But with Jesus, I love all of you, and I want you to come back home, come to the Malakut.